Mayor Hargrove's residence. David Prescott, please. Who's calling? Never mind who's calling. Get him. Yes, sir. Prescott's wanted on a telephone, but I can't seem to attract his attention. I'll get him, Mrs. Hardgrove. I think he wanted to say something to you. I think he wanted to suggest that I break a leg. Flatterer. <laughs> Maybe you could cut in, Mr. Frazier. The privilege of being alone has got him. Oh, no. On the phone. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Dave? Yes, who is this? Francis. Francis? Francis who? Oh, now what difference does it make? You won't remember me anyway. I gotta see you right now. That's impossible. This party for Miss McLeod is very important. And with Mayor Hargrove out of town, I'm practically the official host. After I see you, you might want to resign. Pronto. Look, are you crazy? If this is some sort of practical joke. Don't you hang up, bub. Meet me in the backyard. I'm coming right over. You will not. I can't allow strangers to come barging in here. What'll everybody say? If I have to come in after you, you've no idea what they'll say. Now, be there. Wait a minute. Francis, wait a minute. Listen. Francis. What's wrong, Fresca? Ex-girlfriend? No. No, nothing like that. Excuse me just a moment, will you, please? <laughs> All right, I'm here. Who needs you? Charlie, I'm sorry. How did you get in here? Go on, beat it. Psst. Prescott! 
come back here. Who said that? I did, Sonny. Me. Look, I'm in no mood to play hide-and-seek. Where are you? Now, just turn around real slow. Steady. I'm Francis. Don't let it floor you, bub. If this trip wasn't necessary, I wouldn't be here. Snap out of it, boy. I don't like one-way conversations. It's a, it's a trick. It's a trick. Some wise guy around here is a ventriloquist. Nobody's here but you and me. I must be off my rocker. Entirely within the realm of possibility. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mules can't talk to people. <laughs> Why not? People talk to mules. Nice muley. See what Davy's got for you? A great, big, juicy carrot. Why, you're the mule from the Fletcher farm. What I have to go through with you animal lovers. You remind me of a mule that was on my uncle's farm when he used to own it. I, I used to ride it. That was me. Well, I used to call you Sarah. Shows how much you know about mules. No, no, it's, it's impossible. You never talked to me before. Never had anything to say. Why, I don't know, but your uncle always had a weak spot for you. So out of respect for his memory, I gotta keep you out of trouble. Trouble? Who's in trouble? You are. Stay away from the Cloud Castle. That joint's unhealthy for outsiders. You don't believe that haunted house nonsense old Hector McCloud started because he was feuding with the town, do you? Now that Lorna's inherited the place, you're gonna help end the feud, huh? Well, certainly that's why the mayor hired me to... How did you know? Davy, you're not doing a very good job. I just saw a couple of characters from the castle kill a man. You what? Neat, clean, and tidy. They used a boulder to knock his car off the cliff. But that's murder. Have you told the police? What? And have to be the star witness? Not me. I like the quiet, simple life of a mule. Chief Martin is inside. I'll go and tell him right away. To the rear. Ha! Remember your army training, Davy. Keep your eyes open, your mouth shut, and never, never volunteer. That includes information. But it's my civic duty, and I... Let the police handle it. They're smarter than you are. So is almost everybody else. Well... Well, if you didn't want me to do anything about it in the first place, why did you... Why did you tell me all of this? So you could start running. I don't want your head mounted in the castle trophy room. Uh-oh. Francis! Francis, come back! David, is that you? Terribly sorry that I was so long. Well, why don't you invite her in? Who? Francis? Oh, Francis is a... I mean, it's not a her. It's a him. He spells it with an I. Well, why don't you invite him in? He wasn't dressed for the occasion. I'm telling you, I saw it again. The ghost of McLeod Castle on his white horse in that suit of armor, shining like it was on fire. And don't tell me I was drinking. Six passengers in my bus saw it too. Neil, what's wrong? Oh, Miss McLeod. You know what's wrong. Every time the ghost rides, somebody turns up dead. Superstitious nonsense. Is it? The first time I saw that ghost was 20 years ago. The night you and your mother ran away. An hour later, the cab driver who took him to the station was killed. It was raining. His cab skidded into a brick wall. Three months ago, Miss McLeod's father fell down the castle stairs and broke his neck. That night, the ghost was seen, too. We checked that out. College kids playing a practical joke. You can invent explanations till doomsday. I'm warning you all. Something terrible's gonna happen again. It already has happened. Someone's been murdered on the castle road. <laughs> Yeah. 
It's Roger. Roger Andrew was one of the estate's lawyers. I gathered that. We found this in the car. I'm awfully sorry, Miss McLeod. That man Willoughby was right. Maybe he did see the ghost. Frazier, you better take her home. Don't take her back to the castle. She might not be safe. Prescott, I don't believe in ghosts. But, but... Try and stop them. Hopkins, have them clear that boulder off the road so they can get by. Why? Why not? Well, they might be destroying evidence. What evidence? Are you off on that murder kick again? Don't you think you ought to investigate a little further? I already have. It was obviously an accident. The boulder rolled down on the road. But it could have been pried loose by a crowbar or something like that. Don't you think you ought to investigate for, for scratch marks? Well, I can't have you losing any sleep. I'll go look. Well done, blabbermouth. <laughs> Francis! Have you been here all the time? I heard every cotton-picking word. Hoof and mouth disease, that's what you got. Every time you open your mouth, you put your hoof in it. Well, how else was I gonna convince them that it was murder? I'm worrying about what happens to you when they are convinced. Oh, what could happen to me? Well, that's the silliest... You're out on a limb. Now, before it's sawed off, get the chief up to the castle. On the double. Right. But what are we looking for? The killer's 1925 Rolls Royce and a screaming dame in a window. Right. Thanks, Francis. Now, look, you lay low. I'll handle everything from here on in. That's what I'm afraid of. On Prescott, you were right. There were marks on the rocks. They were made by two crowbars. Oh, that's fine work, Chief. You're pretty sharp yourself. Just trying to be helpful. I don't think you haven't been. There's just one question I'd like to ask. Fire away. I just may have the answer. I'll bet you have, and I intend to get it. Prescott, how do you know so much about this crime? Huh? Unless you're involved. Involved? Me? Why, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Come clean, Prescott. You're in this up to your neck. You knew Andrews was going to be killed before it happened, didn't you? Certainly not. I say you did. I say you wanted him killed. I, why would I want him killed? I, I, I never even knew the man. You knew he wanted to marry Lona McLeod. I, I did not. What are you driving at? The motive, Prescott, jealousy. Or is it the McLeod millions you're after? Is that why you bumped off your competition? You're accusing me of murder? The gentleman, I wasn't even there. I was with you, sir. Remember at the mayor's house. Smart alibi. Who'd you hire to pull the job for you? No, no one. I, I, I don't know anything about, about anything. The coroner fixed the time of death at 9 o'clock. At 9.12, I heard you talking on the phone to some dame named Frances, and you were plenty upset. She was reporting in for the killer, wasn't she? Frances is not a she, it's a he. Oh, a he, huh? The killer himself, huh? No, no, it's not a he. I mean... <laughs> Funny thing, if you knew who Francis was, you'd know how silly this whole thing is. I want to know Francis. Who is he? Who's Francis? Just find the two fellows who was driving the Rolls Royce on the road. Who's Francis? Look, they might be in the castle now. Lorna might be in danger. Francis, God, who's Francis? If I told you, I might be in a worse fix. You couldn't be. I'm holding you as a material witness until you crack. By then, I'll have enough evidence to book you for murder. Keep working on him. You go! I must apologize for Hugo. Few visitors ever come here. But I gather this is an official call. You don't mind. We'd like to look around, question the staff. More information from Prescott? It's my job to check out everything. Of course. Uh, Chief Martin, Lieutenant Hopkins, Mr. Jason, the castle curator. Since Mr. McLeod's death, there's only Hugo, Mrs. McPherson, the housekeeper, and Malcolm, the handyman. He's at the forge. I'll fetch him. Now, 
How come you want it inside? In a moment. I've never been up here before. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Hector was the last of the McClouds. This was the castle of his ancestors. He brought it here stone by stone and restored it just as it was 500 years ago. We'd better go inside. Where do you keep the rest of the cars? There be none. Only Mr. Fraser's. Didn't McLeod have an old Rolls Royce? The mistress did. When she went away, the master and his rage had it driven into the moat. That was 20 years ago. Miss McLeod, exactly when was it you told Prescott that Roger Andrews was coming to see you? Yesterday. But I told him nothing about Roger. Other than he was coming here to discuss the will. How interested was Prescott in the will? Very. Especially in the codicil, which provides that Lorna must live in this castle six months a year or be disinherited. What happens to the estate if she is? Your city inherits it. What? To be turned into an art museum. The paintings alone are worth millions. But Cloud hated this town. Not nearly as much as he hated my mother for leaving him. The will was his way of forcing me back from Europe. Hasn't it puzzled you why Prescott was so determined to prove that Andrews was murdered? Yeah. But I meet a lot of weirdies in my business. In my opinion, as part of a calculated plan. This ghost nonsense and the rest of it. Someone is trying to frighten Lorna away from here. You're a way off base. No official in this town knew anything about that will. Any motive that Prescott had was a personal one. I refuse to believe that David's involved in any way. He just couldn't be. He's our one leader the killer, Miss McLeod. Unless someone in this place would like to tell me who murdered Roger Andrews. Aye, it was the ghost of the McLeod. I warned the master 30 years ago not to tear the castle from the lands of his ancestors. As long as it stands on foreign soil, the ghost will seek revenge. No one will ever live in peace within these walls. Mrs. McPherson, that's quite enough. Now, just a minute. I have a question. Mr. Jason tells me no one left here last night. Did any of you hear a woman scream? We all did. It was the wail of the Banshee. Oh, Banshee ghost! This is the 20th century! There's been a murder committed here, and I intend to find the killer. And I don't expect him to be a ghost! There's no sign of that Rolls Royce, Chief. They say they got rid of it 20 years ago. But even if they dumped it yesterday, it's gone forever. There's quicksand at the bottom of that moat. Keep working on Prescott. I've been on my feet for 36 hours. I'm going to get some rest before I start seeing ghosts myself. Well, I'm sorry to disturb you, Chief, but this is too hot to keep. Go ahead. It's a telegram addressed to you. Edward Ryan of Andrews, Ryan, Grisby, and Biddle on his way to McLeod Castle. Stop him or he'll be dead before morning. Signed, Sarah. Sarah? Sarah who? Well, I checked the telegraph office. I was phoned in by a man when they said they didn't take anonymous wires. He said to sign it, Sarah. I'll be right down. All right, Prescott. On your huh? feet. Huh? On your feet. Uh, oh. well, what's the matter? You, you, you told me I could get to sleep. That was five minutes ago. Does this make any sense to you? Hmm? Sarah? Well, this must be from Francis. I told you Prescott was behind all this. All right, let's start at the beginning. Who's Francis? Do you tell us here, or do we go back upstairs? Gentlemen, what would you say if I told you that... Francis was a talking mule. Oh, Prescott, this is no time for nonsense. That's what I'm talking about, Chief. You'd better do something about this telegram. Chief, just check New York. Ryan planed out last night, arrived an hour ago. That means he's had plenty of time to get to the castle. Chief, you'd better get up there before it's too late. Maybe you're right. But you're going with us. 
Me? Why me? Because I'm not gonna let you out of my sight. This might be some trick of yours. And I don't trust your friend Francis. Oh, no, wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute, dog. Mr. Ryan was too tired to even wait up for Miss McLeod and Mr. Fraser to return. He left strict orders not to be disturbed. I'll take that responsibility. Mr. Ryan, open up. Maybe, Mr. Ryan. Maybe Mr. Ryan is dead already, Chief. Drag it in. Mr. Ryan, you're, you're all right. Why shouldn't I be? What's the meaning of this? Take a look inside. I'm Chief Martin. Local police, we got a tip that you might be killed tonight. You can't be serious. Well, it's obvious I'm very much alive. Yeah. May I inquire the source of this so-called tip? Well, if you don't mind, I'd rather not go into it. There's nothing, Chief. Balcony over the moat, no way to climb up. I hope you'll excuse us. Get him out of here. But we can't leave, Chief. Remember, we got it on good authority. If he opens his mouth again, muzzle him. But, Chief, look! You can... Bonnie, that wasn't there before. There's some more up ahead. We'd better give him a hand. In case you get restless. the same question. Your telegram got me into this. Why did you have to sign it Sarah? Well, I had to give him some name. Why'd you have to play Sherlock Holmes? Yeah, well, you're not doing so hot yourself. I saw Ryan, and he's alive. Well, he won't be for long. We've got to get the police back to the castle before they break through my roadblock. Your road? You mean to tell me that this is your... Grab those keys. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to drive off in any police car. You're right. In fact, nobody is. All right, let's get moving. Did either of you take the keys? You left them in the ignition.
Chase, look out! I didn't know that. that uh, right? You threw Ryan into the moat. Here's his bathroom to prove it. We fished it out. I tell you, I don't know nothing about it. The last time I saw him, those two men were dragging those him. Those two men with the things over their heads so you couldn't see their faces. Yeah. I'm through buying fairy tales. You tricked me into taking you to that castle so you could murder Ryan yourself. I, I did not. You forced me to go. Is that why you tried to shoot us? I, I didn't try to shoot you. I don't know how that gun got in my hand. Look, you, you, you all saw the ghost. That proves that I'm innocent. It only proves you've got an accomplice. Francis, probably. Come clean. Was he the ghost? Uh, believe me, Francis could never ride a horse. Why not? Because Francis is a... Oh, look, if I don't get a little rest, I'm not going to be responsible for, for what I'm about to say. Prescott, you're not budging off the stool you talk. Is that clear? Prescott! Well? Toughest nut I've ever had to crack. Maybe you're using the wrong approach. David. Mm -hmm. David, wake up. Oh. This is the district attorney. Oh. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, what are you doing here, sir? I've just talked long distance to the mayor. He wants me to do everything I can to help you. Thank you. But you have to level with us first. Well, I have been leveling. I'm innocent. Then you must be shielding somebody. Who is it? Your elusive friend, Francis? David, you're a bright young man. You know everything is going to come out sooner or later. Sooner or later. I guess you're right. All right, then. Where do we find Francis? Find him at the Fletcher farm in the barn. Is that his hideout? No, that happens to be where he lives. Arnold, take this down. What does he look like? Well, he's got big long... Uh, well, he looks about just like any other mule. Mule? Prescott, I... I thought you were going to cooperate. I am, Sir Francis. He's a mule. He was an eyewitness to the Andrews murder. I'll bet if you went to see him right now, he could tell you where Mr. Ryan is. He could tell me? Well, I forgot to mention, but... Francis can... talk. How do you mean, talk? Oh, you, you know, just like, like we're doing now. You know, talk, you, you kind of... Oh, I, I knew how you'd take it. I, I didn't believe it at first either, but nevertheless, it's true. Francis can talk. You see what we've been up against? Now he's setting up an insanity plea. I am not setting up an insanity plea. You can send me to the electric chair, you can burn me to the stake, but I will not plead insanity. Maybe he is nuts. Only a lunatic would insist on going to the chair. He's as sane as we are, but he's not very smart. Even a jury of lunatics wouldn't buy that talking mule story. I'd like to speak to the D.A. Come in, Bertha. She'll only faint again. Let's not waste time. I'm Francis. Oh, no. No, it can't be. By the tail of my great aunt regret who won the Derby. You've been in politics for 20 years. What's so strange about a talking jackass? It's milk. And you haven't even tasted it. 
It's all this overwork. I... I'm having nightmares. Broad daylight. Let's get down to business. I want you to spring Prescott. Spring him? You must be out of your mind. I'd be impeached. Need I remind you you haven't found Ryan's body? No corpus delecti, no murder charge. I demand Prescott's release. No, absolutely not. According to every precedent, I have the legal right to hold him. Okay, if you want to debate law with me, let's start. Check your Supreme Court decision. Volume 32, page 614, paragraph 7. Get the book. The defense rests. I hope you realize you're using a legal technicality to turn loose a dangerous killer. Look, pal, I give you my word. Davy is innocent. What's more, I guarantee to dig up the real killer for you. Now use that phone. This is an election year. The opposition papers will crucify me. Well, what do you think they'll do if they're tipped you just lost a legal argument to a mule? Now, make that call. David. Lorna! Lorna, I, I didn't think you'd see me. When I saw those... I read them. But I don't believe a word of it. Honest. Honest. I'll never forgive Neil for saying the things he did to those reporters. Does Mr. Frazier think the mayor hired me to frighten you away from here? The last thing I would want is for you to leave here. You're sweet. Don't worry, I'm not going away. But you can't stay here. It wouldn't be safe. I know. Chief Martin was here a while ago, and he insists upon putting a police guard around the castle. It's about time. It's the first intelligent thing he's done. But, David, he says it's to protect me against you. Huh? I told him there's no one in the world I feel safer with. But from his attitude, I don't think you should be here when the police arrive. Maybe you're right. David. Yes? set a man trap and catch a mouse. You rigged this for who? It's home. 
And I don't know yet anybody that comes out. Out? Out of where? When you're through standing on your head, come here and I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shame. No wonder you've been sneezing. You're wringing wet. Oh, brilliant deduction. Been swimming around in that fool moat. Look here. Just came up with this beauty. Francis, there's a ramp running down there. What'd you expect, an escalator? Let's go. Telling me what we're looking for? Just as soon as we find it. You don't have to treat me as though I was a child. No, but it sure helps. Let's go. It's leaking down here. We're under the moat. I don't think it's safe down here. You're half right. On this trip, you don't think. Period. This is a dead end. It's nothing but solid rock. There are no dead ends in this joint. Grab that. I want to see if you can chin yourself. What are you trying to do? Trip into your own coffin? I'm sorry, but that, that cat caught me off guard. Well, make sure nobody else does. Check that door. All clear. Say, I just saw that painting in the Great Hall. Hold up your thumb. My thumb? What for? Because I can't hold up mine. I want to check something. A little to the right. Uh-huh. Over the left. Uh-huh. Why would they bring a priceless Rembrandt down here to the basement? Rembrandt, my hoof. He was right-handed. Those brush strokes were made by a southpaw. You mean to tell me these are forgeries? I hope to kiss Whistler's mother they are. Oh. What do you know about art? Well, someday I'll show you my landscapes. I should have known better. Tell me, Francis, do these paintings have anything to do with the murders? You're getting smart. These are being swapped for the originals by somebody in this castle. But they're worth over $10 million. Uh-huh. Ten million good motives for murder. I'll go and tell Lorna. Later. I'll tail it over to the DA. Tell him I'm making progress. Well, don't tell me you're working on the case with Mr. Reynolds. Why do you think he let you out of the pokey? I promised him I'd dig up the real killer. I should have known it was you, and I haven't even thanked you. But why are you doing all of this for me? When I was young, I was kicked in the head by a man. Now beat it. I'll meet you back at the barn.
Make a thorough search of the castle. Then post two men at every entrance. That won't be necessary, Lieutenant. I have the killer out in the car right now, but I'm going to give you the pleasure of bringing him in. Two squad cars will join you. Didn't you hear what I said, Lieutenant? I have the killer out in the car. Come on. Prescott, if this is another gag, you're going to choke on it. No gag, Lieutenant. Hurry, quick. Quick. There you are, gentlemen. Jason, the castle curator. Gift wrap for the occasion. <laughs> Confess, Prescott, and with luck you might cop a life sentence. Quit stalling. This time we've got the body. And the murder weapon. With your fingerprints all over it. You're just jumping to a conclusion. It's all nothing but circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial? You delivered that body to us yourself. But Jason tried to kill me to cover up all of those forgeries. We searched that storeroom. It was empty. Whoever killed Jason must have hid those paintings. Ask Francis. He'll know. Oh, you're not going to start with that mule again. Look, Prescott, we get paid by the month. We can outlast you. He's back in that mule kick again. Look, why are we wasting time? We got him nailed in the Jason killing. He can only get the chair once. That won't get the administration off the hook. Man, how gross had me on that phone all morning. Insists on a complete confession, clearing the administration. Yeah, but how? Prescott's driving us as batty as he is. The three top criminologists in the state. The mayor borrowed him. All right, gentlemen, he's all yours. You can set up shop in my office. Do you know a mule named Francis? Yes. Does this Francis the mule talk? Yes. Have you ever conversed with this mule? Yes. In what language? In what language? What language? We use the, uh, the same as you and, and myself. No, sir, he hasn't cracked yet. They're giving him the lie detector test now. Here's Dr. Nelson, the mayor. How are you, sir? We've run into a little trouble. Our lie detector seems to have gone a little haywire. According to the graphs, Prescott actually believes that there is such a thing as a talking mule. That is the most ridiculous nonsense I ever heard. I didn't send you down there to have that boy make idiots out of you. Sir, we know he is lying. It's just a matter of convincing him. The truth, say, ought to do it. I'll call you back. He wants to hang on. <laughs> This is the most unusual case I've ever encountered. Even the subconscious mind of this man is convinced there's a talking mule. We're not licked. Dr. Bentley is trying hypnosis. What happened when you came to the Watch the watch. Francis? 
Yes. Have you ever heard this mule talk? Yes. Are you sure you have conversed with this mule? Yes. Prescott, on your feet. You got visitors. More doctors? I won't see them. I won't see anybody. Not even Mayor Hargrove? Is he here? We thought you might like to look a little more presentable. Oh, that's very nice of you gentlemen to bring along something for me to wear so that I be a little more pres... Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? A precautionary measure. Hey, no, but, but, but this is a straitjacket. <laughs> that's right. But you know, you know, it's a... You don't... Hello, Prescott. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Come in. I'm, I'm so happy to see you, sir. Can you help me out of this? All in good time. This is Mr. Grisby and Mr. Biddle of the law firm of Andrews Ryan. I guess it's just Grisby and Biddle now. How do you do, gentlemen? Are, are you going to handle my case? Handle your case? Prescott, you've wiped out half our firm. Why? What's the reason for this mad vendetta? G gentlemen, we'll take that up later. I'm here to help you. Well, then, then, Mr. Mayor, just get me a lawyer, any lawyer. No one wants to handle my case. I promise you that your legal rights will be protected. But I thought when you got here, Mr. Mayor, that this would all be cleared up. And the sooner the better. My whole political future is at stake. Of course, it's about time. It, the whole thing is outrageous. You're the finest mayor this town has ever had. Francis even thinks you ought to run for governor. He says you have the most sensible farm program in the state. Well, I'm glad to hear that some of the voters are still loyal to me. Sir, Francis is the name of his imaginary talking mule. He is not imaginary, sir. David, you've made a shambles out of the police department with that nonsense. Three great criminologists are ready for retirement. Now you must realize that nothing can save you, but why drag my administration down with you? I appeal to you, please issue a statement that you committed those crimes on your own. But I could not do that, sir, because I'd be lying. Are you insinuating that we hired you to kill those people? Of course not, but I'm innocent. You're my only hope. Just talk to Francis. Oh, there he goes again. He's your hope, too. He's been working on the case. He could help if you talk to Francis. Why, he could get us all off the hook. David, if I do visit this uh, creature, yes. will you issue that statement? Of course I will, but I won't have to once you've talked to Francis, sir. Mayor, you can't be serious. Well, think of your position. I am. Line up a police escort. Well, I, for one, am not going to let any imaginary mule make a jackass out of me. Make yourself comfortable, Mr. Mayor. What? Mr. Mayor, Francis will never talk with all these people around. We'll have to go in there alone. Better keep your men back here. Is that the animal? Yes, sir. He hardly looks intelligent enough to bray. Shh. Francis is liable to hear you. Francis, I'd like you to know our distinguished mayor, Hargrove. Oh, he heard you. I'm afraid you've insulted him. You're going to have to apologize. What? I have to apologize to him. 
I'm sorry, Francis. You do look intelligent enough to bray. Francis, I... I know you don't like to talk to strangers, but this is serious. Francis, you want to help me, don't you? Then, then talk to the mayor. No, 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 don't make faces. Just, just say something. Say anything at all. Uh, uh, maybe he's trying to sing for us. No, no. I can't understand it. Uh, Francis, do you know what this is doing to me? Uh, Let's maybe... Oh, your cold come back? Throat is feverish. Your head is hot. Francis, you haven't. Uh, he has laryngitis. A mule with laryngitis? Who ever heard of such a thing? What else would it be? What else would keep him from talking to you? The fact that zoologically it's impossible. Please, don't insult him again. It'll only make things worse. We've got to nurse him back to good health. Prescott, our bargain didn't include my playing nursemaid to a mule. Now you're going back to jail and issue that statement. But, Mr. Mayor. Martin, send some men in here. <coughs> Stop! <coughs> dozen trails out of those hills, and that mule can run like man of war. How could I have been so gullible? Send for the state militia if you have to. We got to catch Prescott before he strikes again. Sure, but who knows where that maniac will show up again? No. Why didn't I listen to Grisby? He would. Grisby, Biddle, Prescott has killed two members of that firm already. Maybe they're next. <laughs> What's happened? Where's Mr. Grisby? I'm afraid we're too late. Three days ago, I was a junior partner. And now I'm head of the firm. Well, these murders are happening faster than we can change the letterheads. And it is feared that the missing attorney, Howard Grisby, met the same fate as his associates, Roger Andrews and Edward Ryan. According to Chief Martin, Ephraim Biddle, the sole survivor of the law firm, is under 24-hour police protection. The statewide dragnet for Prescott continues unabated. All law enforcement officers have orders to shoot the deranged killer on sight. Gosh. I'm listening to my own funeral arrangements. What's he doing? Well... Oh, I must have been crazy to let you hide out here. It'll only be for a little while, Mr. Reynolds. Beside this liniment is guaranteed. On people, Prescott, that's a mule. The first mule in medical history to have laryngitis. Yes, but don't forget the first mule that ever made a deal with the district attorney. Don't remind me. Do you realize what'll happen if the police find you here? Yes. They'll shoot me on sight. That's the most encouraging thing I've heard all day. Huh? I didn't mean that. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm really having a, a nervous breakdown. He's a family man. 
Look at the trouble I got him in. Look at the trouble I got you in. Maybe I ought to give myself up. Oh. Now I don't even know where to start looking. I thought I had to kill her when I had Jason. Then somebody turns up and kills him. Get back in there! What are you doing? You trying to show me something? You know who the murderer is. You're, you're a bird dog, pointing? Well, you're pointing at the car. Are you trying to tell me that Jason was killed by a car? I saw him myself with a knife sticking in his back. Oh, look, Francis, I'm not very good at charades. Can you tell me the name of the killer? Can you give me some sort of a description? He's upright, stiff, thin, tall. Lots of hair. Mrs. McPherson. Long black hair. Hairy eyes. Uh, mustache. Mm -hmm. Mustache? Where's mustache? The mare? You're pointing at the wheel? Sounds like a wheel, mm -hmm. the name? The wheel, mm -hmm. keel, mm -hmm. shield, mm -hmm. wheel, kneel. Mm -hmm. Neil. Mm -hmm. Neil Fraser? Mm -hmm. But he's Lorna's guardian. He's supposed to be protecting her. I've got to go and warn her. I know. I know, you think I'm going to get myself into trouble. Well, I've got to risk it. And look, I can take care of myself. Even if I can't, I've got to think of Lorna. Where's Chief Martin? Up ahead at the castle gate. I'll ride up with you if you don't mind, sir. Jump in. Present from the police department. Prescott is still on the loose. Lorna, look out! Lorna, get the gun! He's the murderer. I can prove it. Keep him covered till I go get the police. So what's wrong? That maniac, Prescott, he tried to kill us. Get all the men in here. Where is he? Well, uh...
sign of him in the moat. We saw him duck in here. Well, there's a narrow ledge out there, but he'd have to be a human fly to crawl to one of the other rooms. He's liable to be anything. Stay here. He may crawl back. take every precaution to protect Miss McLeod. That's very considerate of you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mr. Mayor! There's something that I've got to hook. Now! How do you open this? I have no idea. I never knew it existed. Get Chief Martin. We're going to have to break through. Better take Miss McLeod to her room. And don't worry, we'll catch Prescott if we have to tear this place down stone by stone. that thing before you give yourself a hot foot. Francis. It isn't the ghost of my great aunt Regret who won the derby. Oh, your voice. You got it back. The liniment worked. Only after I drank it. Boy, am I glad to see you. Francis, do you know who's trying to kill me? Your blue-eyed bundle of loveliness, Lorna. Got it straight from the horse's mouth. The ghost's horse. The ghost horse? Where did you find him? Same place I picked up this tin jockey. There's a hidden stable next to the storeroom. Oh, we ought to tell the police about it. Oh, but how am I going to do that? Every time they see me, they start shooting at me. I know just the people to handle it. Climb aboard. Keep your hands off the hardware. We'll need it for evidence. handle it. Hey, this is a dead end. The only dead end around here is what you're thinking with. Francis, help! We might as well be in this dungeon. Dungeon? Gentlemen, who is she? Lorna Ann McLeod, the real one. But, but... Lorna upstairs. An imposter brought here by Neil Fraser. He knew that no one in America had seen me since I was a child. Except the estate lawyers. That's why Andrews was murdered. We'll never get out of here alive. There's your ghost, you superstitious idiots. It was Prescott's confounded mule. have broken through. They'll blast walls until they reach the dungeon. Neil, let's get out of here. They won't find anything in the dungeon. Flooded. There's no way we can turn the water on. The police are all around the sluice valve. We've got to get them away from the castle. The passageway to the stable is still clear. Not me. 
When those police go after the ghost, they'll be shooting. You fool, it's our only chance. Get the bagpipes. We've already taken enough risks for our share of the McLeod fortune. If you want the ghost to ride, you do it. Very well, I will. Malcolm, you've given me an idea. It'll solve everything if the police do catch up with the ghost and find him dead. I think I've got it. What you need is a do-it-yourself safe cracking kid. Who is it? It's Fred. It's, it's, a, it's a friend. We're as good as out of here. Boy, have I got news for you. It's dated. I was bringing you down here to get them out. Well, never mind about the small talk. Just kick in the door. It's solid iron. I'm not a battering ram. Well, then get some keys or a hacksaw, anything. Relax. With a little help from me, the police can be here in a few minutes. I knew you'd think of... The police? They'll shoot me on sight. Not if you're a small target. Hide. Let the others do the talking. supposed to be on their way here. There they are now. Now remember, Mr. Grisby, talk fast. My life is in your mouth. All right, up so daisy. How did I get into this? You've been booby trapped. They were gonna air condition you and let the police find a nice dead ghost. Well, get me out of this.
we got to get him out of there. And, and Malcolm's got the key. And who's going to bite through the leg irons? Oh, how do we shut off the water? Oh, hop on, Galahad. The city will always be grateful to you. But are you sure you want to name it the Prescott Museum? Very sure. David made it all possible. And I haven't really thanked him yet. You know, there's a customary reward when a lady is rescued by a knight in shining armor. Even if he was on a mule. Wait until he tries to tell her that mule also talks. Hey, fellas. Don't you think we ought to leave him alone? Hmm? <laughs> 